I've lived on this road for quite a while and well, I've been here for six years and one thing that's always annoyed me is the cars driving by and a lot of times kids are driving by on their ATVs and things like that. So I'm trying to screen the house more. This is the view from the road and these are the parking lots, parking spaces that I just covered in huge amounts of wood chips which have subsided but they make it really nice so you can just kind of pull in here and build soil while you park your car. And uh, there you go, driving by. And so last year I started, uh, we had this tree fall down and so I put piles of brush next to the trees here and just left spaces where the cars pull in. And so there's kind of shoveled, tilled soil under there, covered with branches, covered with hay, rotting down. And that goes all the way to the end of the visual screen, where the screen is gonna go. And then you can see this kind of wedge here of hay, which is also a garden bed. There's another one coming in behind that car, more on the far side there. And then another one here that goes like this. And so what you can see when you're at the front of the house is a, a branching pattern that wasn't even really planned. It's just sort of natural design that you come to the house, which is kind of like the trunk of the tree, and you might want to leave that way. You might want to go to that. You might want to go there. You might want to go there. So it's, um, you know, functional design of branching, not really a forced design, which you see sometimes in the design world. <laughs> but anyway, um, so these kind of spokes here, or these spaces between the functional alleyways are all going to be planted with things that help block that screen, or help screen the road, rather. So right now, what I'm working on is this part, I had put down a landscape fabric. We've got wood chips. Um, this is an observation chair by the road. I don't really know what that's doing here. But I just started um, shovel building this bed here. It's gonna go all the way down to this black walnut a little bit beyond it, which will give me a pretty decent visual screen. You can see once I get here, you can see that rock um, blocks the view from here over. So with this all planted out, we'll get a really nice protected screened in area there. So what am I going to plant? First, I'm going to put in miscanthus grass, rhizomes, and drew some artichoke roots all in this uh, lit space here that gets a lot of sun. And I'm gonna see who wins, which is actually gonna be really exciting because both of those plants are so bomber. I think the, the juice martichokes will grow a lot more in the first year, and but I don't think they're gonna completely shade out the miscanthus either. I might put the miscanthus to the south and let the juice martichokes come up behind them to the north, although it's more or less a north-south road here. So the south is like that. So I'll probably put the um, miscanthus on the eastern side that's getting a little more southern sun, southeast. Anyway, and then I'll plant in some woody perennials of various descriptions. Poplars, willows, um, thicket forming plums. Um, probably, I've been trying to propagate some white cedar uh, Thuja occidentalis, so I might put some of that in because they don't get huge and they will cover the space eventually. But it's just going to be a cacophony of a million different kinds of plants um, to create a little bit more of a privacy space there. And just wanted to share how I'm going about it. Um, no surprises, mulch, digging garden beds, planting fast growing perennials, 
and then gonna mulch those in and we'll do an update later on. Also, for those of you who watched the video about gorilla seeding on the opposite side of the road, this is the result of that pretty amazing take here of diverse uh, brassica, clovers, tree seeds, <laughs> bush seeds. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Actually, all that seed is stuff that I threw, and it goes all the way down. Um, I actually called the town and asked whether they were gonna seed rye in here, and they said no, which means their plan was essentially just not to come back at all or do anything. And so instead of this just being super rugged, um, kind of, well, it's not that weeds are bad, but it could be better if you intervene a little bit in terms of the floral diversity. Uh, I mean, it, most of these species are essentially weeds from elsewhere as well. Um, but also I wanted to, to note here, look at the steepness of this slope. It's, it's more than 100% grade, 45 degree angle. And we've got good take all the way up. And that was because of the timing. If you did this um, without that frost heaving, you wouldn't be able to get the seeds to stay on that kind of slope. So this will, here's a perfect example. I mean, this slope is probably 55, 60 degrees, and we've got everything taking on that super rocky, steep hillside. I mean, this one's even more, and all these seeds are stuff that I threw in here. Those little pockets during the freeze-thaw cycles are what helped everything stay where it is. And now, and we've had severe rains and hard frost since then. Last night went down to 22. And so all this stuff made it very exciting. And uh, they'll pr hold this, uh, this slope in place. A lot of these are clovers, extremely vigorous root systems. And uh, I think it's gonna work out. It's gonna prevent erosion, gonna add floral diversity, pollinators. Um, all the good stuff. And I did come back two times and seed in here. Just throw a little bit. It took me, I mean, this whole bit of work all the way to the end of the corner with those pines there. It didn't take me 15 minutes and it t changed the whole trajectory of this, um, this land for, for the season.